ever wonder what it's like to drive a Class A motorhome? Well, we're going to show you today. So let's go! Yeah. But before we get in to drive the motorhome, there are a few safety things we have to do. This isn't like driving your car. What? So let's show them, John. <laughs> yeah, let's. First, we're going to do a safety check. Here you go. I'm going to head inside and turn on the blinkers and all the lights while you walk around. Yay! Thank you, Sherry. Plus, it's warm inside! Ha <laughs> ha, see, I knew there was another reason. Sherry, can I get a brake check? Brakes applied. Over. Brakes are good. Over. John? I came up front. John! <laughs> We're in the back! Come back! <laughs> <laughs> we can see that my marker lights, my hazard lights, all work. As we go up front, we can check the side markers. Also, check the condition of your vehicle. Make sure nothing's falling off. What about those tires, John? We do check the tires. I do have a tire minder, which also tells me the condition from the inside. But these tires look good. Look at that. My signals all the way from my mirrors across the front. And look, Sherry, all our lights work. Marker lights across the top. I like to make sure my wipers are good too, not cracking or hard. And the final thing we'll do is kick out our chocks. Let's head inside. We're now leaving our storage area and these are some of the bumpiest roads I've ever come across leaving here. And the one thing I will say, that driving a Class A gas, not as smooth as a Class A diesel, that's for sure. We feel these bumps. And we get jolted around quite a bit in this parking area. I try to miss as many as I can with limited amounts of success. The other thing I don't like are low-hanging trees. Can't do much about that, though. I think we missed it this time. Now this is pretty narrow. If you look at my mirrors, so I'm on the edge of the road on the passenger side, and I'm on the, almost on the double yellow on this side. So this is about the narrowest road that I'll go in besides the roads at the campgrounds. But, and it's not hard to keep it where it is. The only thing I have to be careful of is making a sharp right. Left turns are a little bit easier from roads like this. I have more room going left. Making this right here, I like to inch my way a little bit left on the yellow lines. And then I still have to take it out kind of far to miss that corner with my back tire. Don't want to go in the grass. That was pretty close. The big thing is, if you're on a road this small, just take your time and don't worry about anyone behind you. <laughs> They'll go around you if they can. You know, a lot of people get a little panicked by irritated people behind them. Don't do that. You know, you're in an RV, relax. You'll get where you're going safely that way. Now, I'm not sure if the camera's picking up all the creaking and knocking in here. It's not that loud right now. The roads aren't too bad. But you do get a lot of uh, noise from the RV furniture from time to time, so don't let that discourage you though. So John, shall we take this out on the highway now? Yeah, let's take her out. Okay, let's do that. And let's give everyone an idea of what it's like driving on a nice smooth highway. Yep. It's a Saturday morning, so there probably isn't a lot of traffic right now. No. Uh, but we're, we're hoping to run into some so that we can give you an idea of what that's like as well, because <laughs> She's hoping to run into some. 
well, that, that's really that's really challenging though, right? That's the challenging part is when you have to deal with other drivers who don't understand how an RV stops, who don't understand what your visibility is like, who don't understand, who really don't understand anything, they and just don't. nobody wants to be behind you. No. And I think it's important. I mean, look, we love driving this thing. It's a yeah, lot of fun. It is. And it's 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 important to know the good and the bad, right? Right. And be okay. Yeah, there is something that's just okay. <laughs> yeah. This is a bumpy exit. <laughs> now, as I merge onto an, a highway, I want to look for any large vehicles that are coming up at my speed right now. Also, unfortunately, you have to watch out for people behind me who like to merge out quickly, like the car just did here. But he went all the way across. Uh, sometimes they like to merge out quickly and take the lane so I can't merge out. You have to watch out for that. You're not the fastest thing on the road. When trucks pass us, we get affected by the wind from their passing and it pushes me away from the truck. So if a truck passes on my left, it pushes me to the right. So I end up having to steer a bit to the towards the truck to compensate for that, like right now. That was a small push, but still it was there. So to count on the movement from trucks in the wind, a lot of people will get suspension upgrades, uh, like sway bars, and even things like liquid springs, which is pretty expensive, but it stabilizes your vehicle pretty well. So it's up to you how much you want to stabilize your vehicle. approximately 36 feet and I'm going to lean over here you'll notice we're using two cameras well actually we're using like three cameras for these shots because we wanted to give you an idea of what it was like so on the dash we have our GoPro which has a stabilizer so you may not see as much of the bounciness right now I'm using our Sony ZV-1 without a gimbal so you'll see that there's a lot of movement in the frame as we go and then behind John's head, we have an iPhone, which has some stabilization, but you'll probably see some of the rockiness that's in here. But you're seeing things, um, how it kind of bounces around as we drive. Now, it's very important to know the height of your RV. Um, for highway bridges, I don't worry too much. There is a standard on the highway, but once you get off, there isn't. Luckily, I've never had to turn around in a tight spot. So you have to be very careful. You have to be careful about your, your height, and you have to be careful about your weight. A lot of people may not think about that. We are, uh, our gross weight, empty, is 22,000 pounds, which is 11 tons. And there are a lot of roads out there and bridges that say no vehicles over five tons or no vehicles over 10 tons. Those are very common. So you have to be careful to pay attention to that. Some bridges you have to be very careful because you may be able to go under them if you go through the middle portion or if you're in the middle lane. Right. But like the right lane might be lower than the center lane. Right. So you have to pay attention to that too. 
And also, uh, we use a truck app off of our phone. It's a free app, and uh, I'll put that down in the description below. We don't, no, we don't get paid for it or anything like that. But we use this app, uh, which is meant for trucks. You put your height and your weight and your length into the app, and then it will route you in a way that you don't get yourself into trouble. Soon we're going to hit some steep roads. They're going to be, uh, we're going to be at the edge of the mountains, and we'll have uh, truck lanes. And at some point, I will probably have to take one of the truck lanes because we're not very fast going uphill. Even though it doesn't seem like that much of an incline, our engine sounds like it's struggling. It's not, but it's it gets really loud, and then the fans will eventually start to kick in too. Yeah, they will. Although it is a cold day, so maybe not. That's true, John, because in the summertime, we would really hear the fans. Yeah, we would. That's, that's very true. Sure about? Oh, there it is. It quieted down. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons why we want a diesel push. On my left, I have control of my cameras. All three of my cameras I have set up to display at once here. The default is to have just a rear view, and when you turn on the signal, right or left, come on, according to which signal you use. On my right, my Bluetooth. That also has a rear view camera if I need it. And I can put my directions on here as well as play music and answer the phone. driving with us down the road in our Class A motor home. Please let us know if you have any additional comments or questions about what it's like driving a 37-foot RV. Yeah, and anything else you want to know. See you on the road.